So it's the dead of winter here in Somerville, Massachusetts, and we're going to see another 3D printing company that is doing something amazing. They're making 3D printed objects that are as tough as steel. I'm John Biggs, and this is TechCrunch Makers. <laughs> You're in our development center. When we met you back at CES, this was a couple of months ago, you brought us these crazy 3D printed objects which are actually made out of carbon fiber. Yes. And you explained that they were the replacements for tools. You could use these in actual machinery. Yes. And we have, you know, two examples here. We have two separate wrenches. Mm -hmm. So we have a normal plastic printed wrench, uh, which is, you know, it's just one material of plastic. And then we have the second wrench where you can see this uh, band reinforced with uh, continuous strand fiberglass on the top and bottom. Adding this uh, continuous strand through the second print head makes it uh, 10 times stronger. Okay. So which one could I step on and not break? This one. This one? Yes. And what's, what is this thing? This is, looks like some kind of... That's tube. over... Yeah, great. So this is, this is you know, one of our guys, as we'll see later, uh, is a French horn mm -hmm. aficionado. He plays the horn, like, <laughs> making one. It's kind of crazy. This is a tube bender, which he catted up uh, in SolidWorks, and then pressed together with a pin from McMaster car, and then physically use it to bend that tube. So you have some prototype stuff here, you have some testing stuff in this lab, so why don't we walk us through this? We have some engineering development zone over here, just uh, standard bench space. This is kind of our materials R&D area. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite section of the shop. Okay. This is our DMA machine. It does three-point bend testing and basically sinusoidally drives in a bunch of energy into the beam. Mm -hmm. This materials lab is the feedback loop that we use to develop new materials. So this will have a different plastic matrix. We'll put it in here, we'll test it, you know, with the chamber up. You know, as a function of temperature, and see is it stronger, is it weaker, does it, how does it perform over time. You know, we're always trying to push the materials to kind of a higher state, to get higher strength. So if you see these little curves over here, what it does essentially is it puts it in an oven as a function of temperature and frequency sweep. One of our engineers is making his own French horn. So this is like, this is a labor of love. And you can see a whole bunch of uh, tooling and fixtures that we've printed off our production machines used to uh, bend and locate these and locate these parts. So you have an optical table, the standard hole pattern. This whole horn is modeled up. Okay. And then essentially you bring in your plastic part, extract away the location of the horn, and then uh, you can set it in it. And the key is that it locates it in space and it won't scratch the surface. Okay. When you bend a tube around this part, you're bending the tube in X, Y, and in Z. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to machine that, you'd have to you know, machine this first operation, rotate the part, machine the second operation, okay. right? And then you have to do the same thing for the backside. So this is either three operations with an operator at a CNC machine, or you just CAD it, hit print, and come back the next morning and have your part. These were the two beta printers. Okay. So this was actually uh, John Hirschtech's first beta. This is one of the, uh, one of the first betas of five. This is where we ran the uh, prototype production line. Mm -hmm. So the first units came out here. So most of the manufacturing was done here. You guys are doing a little more contract work now, but you still have parts and things here. Exactly. So we have, so you see print heads, fiber heads, FDM heads. So this is the energy chain that's in top. Mm -hmm. This has the uh, plastic inlet tube. Again, more turn pieces. So that keeps everything in the right spot. Oh, very cool. And I guess over here, you, you showed us some of these, these the beagle boards. We have a little beagle bone inside the printer that does all the uh, CPU power, so it talks to the internet, runs a touch screen. But here's actually one of the 3D printed parts we use in the printer. So it will hold a USB hub and the Wi-Fi adapter. Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, one of the beautiful parts of 3D printing. The original uh, Wi-Fi adapter that we used had like a 1 in 200 failure mode. So it's not like you can do incoming inspection, find it, and boot it. It's like months later, the oh, printer no. drops off once. Right? Because the bracket was printed, we were able to like rev the Wi-Fi card, mm -hmm. print a new bracket, retrofit the printers, and they're all rock and roll. This is our stage. I mean, feel that. And this is extruded or is so this? So this is a CNC. Machine. This is okay. all CNC. This is machine and powder coated? Machined and anodized. Okay. And these are these, uh, these, are these little precision alignment mm -hmm. mechanisms. So if you screw that in, you can feel, uh, you can... Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and it's designed to be... Uh, you know, enough resistance so that the vibration inherent to printing doesn't shake it free. Okay. These guys are in the process of burning. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's wrapped up in a electric customer. It's uh, printing now a big hex test. So one of the final inspection steps will be uh, to print this base of hex 
and then basically do uh, 500 stitches. So we know that the fiber side is working well, the plastic side is working well. When it finishes this test, it will do its final test over there, which is for alignment. So the same way your HP printer, you know, print that test sure. pattern and make sure that everything's lined up. We have that little divot in here, we we'll print this thing, inspect it. Once it goes through here, it's boxed up and out the door. We view this as a prototype for metal. So things that you used to have to send out, you know, to get CNC machined, you can now print at your desk. Which takes the design cycle for mechanical engineer from, you know, right now, CAD's so fast. Right? The CAD companies have done an amazing job of letting you design parts quickly, iterate on parts quickly, and then you get to wait a week mm -hmm. for that part to come for in. For that part to pop out. Right? We come here and we say, hey, okay, you get a mechanical engineer, you give her a seat of CAD, she designs a part in a day, she hits go, she prints it off, she comes back the next morning, she has the part. Your week design cycle turned into two days. Okay. And then when you do that, five iterations, your five week design cycle turned into a week. So who is this printer for? Is this printer for the engineer at, I don't know, Honda or Toyota or something who needs parts that are going to survive? Or could this be for somebody who just wants to, I don't know, build a Yoda head? Uh, this is not really for Yoda heads. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could make one unbelievably strong Yoda head on right. here, but it's more aimed at, you know, the Honda's, Toyota's of the world. Uh, take your pick, apparel companies who have already bought them, aerospace companies. There you have it. This is Mark Forged. I'm John Biggs with TechCrunch, and this was TechCrunch Makers. Thank you.